So I am going to talk about a thing that apparently I address every December, every year since I have started this channel, and we're gonna do it again. So yes, let's deal with that. If you're new here, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button so you can see this video every year. <laughs> Kidding. We talk about all kinds of stuff from reviews on the latest and coolest eyewear, like stuff from T. Henry, Blake Kuhara, Leibach & York, and other various really cool companies and manufacturers of cool glasses, as well as, like today's video, more technical stuff with fit and adjustment or prescription lenses for both the optician and the consumer side of things. So we can play and we can have some fun that you might not find on other channels. So I hope you enjoy what you get out of here. Stick around with the subscription and the notifications. Today, what I wanna talk about is glasses sliding and slipping. <sighs> Apparently it really grinds my gears and we talk about it every year. And it is the one thing that has bested crooked glasses, and that is glasses that are doing this. Constantly sliding down, falling from where you want them to be. Not only is it wearing them down here and you can't see anything anymore, it's not super comfortable with them down there either, is it? No, it's not. So some of the things we can do to fix that are fixing here, how it fits the back of the skull, or if it's too much pressure here, which actually surprises a lot of people. If it is too much pressure, it will cause it to slowly slide forward. If you think about it like a spring under tension, that is exactly what is happening. I don't have anything with a spring hinge here handy, so I can't demonstrate that effect super easily. Unfortunately, I should have thought better ahead of that, but it, you know how a spring works. It's flat, you pull it apart, it's under tension, and it wants to do everything it can to come back to where it's not under tension. That is what your frame will do. If it is far too tight back here, it will constantly push and make itself slide down because it is trying to return back to where it wants to. So like if I pull this frame out, it wants to go back to this position, right? So if I'm wearing it and it's too tight here on the face, it's gonna do exactly that. It's gonna keep trying to bring itself back in to cause it to slide just like that. You can see I'm actually putting pressure inwards. I am not sliding that forward by hand. I am pushing inwards and it is sliding down. It's one thing that throws a lot of people off. I will see very often the exact opposite is bending it too much back here is gonna cause that same thing. If it's bowed in too much back there, it's gonna do the exact same thing because it's gonna push out here and then you're not gonna have any contact here. So now you've got less grip all through here, too much pressure here, and the same thing's gonna happen. It's gonna slide down. <sighs> Let's focus on the fix for that first. So if the frame is, I don't wanna say too small because it's not necessarily the case. The adjustment can cause that by far. I've seen frames that are way too big to do that. It's a fun game to play. So what you wanna do in that case, this is not the best frame for this. Let's grab this little guy here. The old easy to bend AOs. So if you've got a frame like this, the temples are going inward, causing too much pressure, that's gonna cause it to slide down, as I mentioned before. This one with the silicone pads has a little bit more grip there, so it can make up for it to some degree, but it is still a shortcoming, no less. In that case, what you want to do is essentially open the frame up. Where you can do that is here in the bridge. You would support under, fingers here, and bend and bring that around. And that's gonna open it up just ever so slightly. Now we can actually see another problem with this frame and that is this temple is more in than the other. So we can adjust that just slightly as well. Same thing, you wanna brace right through here and push lightly there. Be careful doing this on your own frame because you can crack a lens doing that, particularly in metal frames with glass lenses. Looking at your Ray-Ban wearers, I've done it myself before. It is not a situation you wanna be in and it is very easy to do. Now, that's kind of fixed that, so we're not pushing in here as much and that actually fixes that frame. It's not wanting to slide and fall off at all with just that minor adjustment. 
I'm gonna fix it back because I think this one needs a little bit more wrap and the factory does not do a good job of that. I'm not going to get into the details of the adjustments I'm making to do that and make it still fit properly. Just know that I am always making tweaks to these frames and that now that's better. Now, this guy here, a frame that actually is hugely oversized and yeah. So this is one I actually find very interesting. A lot of people think everything to do with the frame slipping is to do with how it fits on the bridge. If the bridge area is too big or too small, that it's gonna cause the frame to slide and slip down. And that is very often not true, except in the case that it is so far off that it changes the balance on the frame to where it can't possibly stay up. As long as there's contact down through here in the bridge area, the sliding is not going to be caused by that. The pressure is enough. Everything else from here back is what will determine that. If the frame is sitting too high up, then usually you're okay. That's not as big of a problem. It can be if only the very bottom is touching. And let's, let's kind of this one right here. Come on, cooperate. There we go. So if only this little area of the pad is making contact, you know, that is okay with general just nose pads like these guys. It's a pretty small area anyways, that 10 to 12 millimeters. But as I mentioned earlier with the silicone pads, you have a little bit more grip there anyway. So it can actually cut off some of the shortcomings of a poor fit there. Now with this largely oversized frame, you can do kind of the same thing. You can actually, and we've really already done this with this frame where it's got a lot more wrap into it. So these temples are going inwards and then you would tweak and kind of flare out through here so that it's not too much pressure. And then you would come in and now where we're making contact here, you would open that up and follow the curvature of the head the rest of the way back. So rather than letting it do this, you would open it up just a tiny little bit with the acetate frames you can heat up here at the bridge, or you can do it on each side individually by heating up over here. Of course, the trick there is you have to be careful because you can ruin a lens that way. Always keep that in mind. It's easy to break stuff, right? That's why you want professionals doing these things in general. <sighs> now, let's see. Where is this guy? This is a fun one. This one's super, super small. So in stark contrast to the one that was super big on my face, one that is super tiny. You can see it's making contact literally from right behind my eyeballs all the way back. And it is definitely pushing in, bowing out, and slipping just that little bit, even just kind of sitting here talking. Now, this one's on level. I got some other adjustment stuff going on that would drive me bonkers in most cases, but we're going to ignore all of that and focus on the fit and keep it from sliding. Now, as I mentioned, the contour and the curvature matters, but the reason I wanted to grab this frame is it's a little bit shorter, and you can see that. The bend here happens way before my ear actually is. And that is really interesting because that's still a 140 length temple and this is why you'll see me not get into temple length super often because it varies kind of like pan sizes all over the map. Same number can mean anything because this guy was 150 and it wasn't way too long. And then this guy is a 140 and it's perfect, right? Let's see. 146. I bet I don't have a 140 down here. You'd think I know what I'm doing after all this time, but I just have fun. Yeah, oh, that was another 140. So there you go. This is a 140, way too short behind the ear where it's falling. This one's a 140 and it's perfect. So it just goes to show you, it's all in the fit. This guy, if we wanted to rectify that, we're gonna change and straighten out back here so that bend is not before the ear. So you're grabbing, you're bracing here. This acetate's warm enough already. 
Don't worry about that. I'm not breaking anything. So you're gonna make this guy essentially straight. You can do that on both sides. And again, the way you're doing that is you're bracing here, you're bracing here, and you're making that bend with your thumb reinforcing right there to make that a smooth arc. You will kind of bend it as you go. Now, I didn't flatten these out entirely because I still want some gauge of how that is landing on the ear. So now that we've got that fully straightened out, you can see now that bend, even from that little tweak, is starting further back behind the ear. So now we've got a good starting point, but we're still squeezing a ton right through here and already making contact up here. So this frame would need opened up a little bit. We do have a pretty good bit of wrap in this frame actually from the factory that's more in kind of that six range. It's a little unusual to see. Most frames are gonna be more of a two to a four these days, a little bit flatter. But on this guy, you would essentially heat up that bridge, open that up a little bit, kind of like what I was showing on the metal frame. This one, we're just gonna do it very subtly off camera. <laughs> because you don't want to see me doing this and try to do it. You'll break your bridge. All right, so now we flatten that out quite a bit. We're more in, actually, that's closer to zero to two now, but for this, it will work. Now we can see our temples are much out wider. There we go. Now we're just starting to kiss in these areas here, which is good. Not super tight, not super squeezy. You don't see that really strong divot where the temples are. Already that's fitting a lot better, not trying to slip and slide and fall off. Now we would go back in and fix the rest of back here because we are poking out right here. The curvature could happen a little bit on that tail side. So now we need to get that bend back in place, but we need it more back in here. So opposite of what we did before, we're gonna brace and we're gonna bend and be very careful if you're doing this because it is a lot of frames, it's easy to snap that tip off and that little guy is not fun going through your finger. Trust me on that. So now we've got a little bit more bend in there. You don't want anything crazy. Generally 30 to 45 degrees is a nice little sweet spot. It's still, it's a fighter. It's a fighter. She is a fighter. And now we've got that bend nice and even back at that 30 degree area. And it is falling right there over the ears. You can see a little bit of it happen sooner, and that's just where I didn't fully straighten this out before. So I'll tweak that and bring it a little bit further back, just kind of undoing and redoing a little bit there. Now, we're much, much better. This side's looking great. This side could still use a little bit more tweak because it is a little bit too soon in making contact here instead of where that bend starts. And I have a feeling this one is going to fight me to the death. It's just one of those. And it's that kind of day, and that's how it goes. All right. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Now that's nice. So now our bend is happening right behind the ears. We do still have a little bit of this where it's not really, it's about like that. I'll try and show you on camera here. It's about like that behind my head where this tip isn't really making full contact. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you can break this off past where that metal core ends. You don't wanna do that because all that pressure is gonna jab that sucker right into your finger. I've done it, I don't recommend it. It's not fun. So instead of making the bend back here where it's not actually making contact, where you wanna make that bend is further up where that core is. So same thing as that bend I mentioned earlier, but again, finger before the metal ends, not after, you'll snap it off. And odds are you'll run that metal right through your hand. So you just very slightly add a little bit more bend there and you can see the difference where we're more straight here and more bent here, but that's gonna bring this piece in closer to the back of the head. And that is exactly what we have now, where it is just ever so slightly kissing and caressing behind the ear, spreading that pressure out. It's not necessarily down all the way behind the ear. Sometimes you'll see that adjustment, not a huge fan of it. But the big thing is that it curves, it follows, it contours, it lightly touches from here the rest of the way back, not squeezing anywhere, not really big and open anywhere. 
and just a nice spread of pressure. In today's age where frame sizing is all over the map, trends are bigger than they've been in decades, it really comes down to knowing what you're doing with fit. To get that pair of glasses you love from it looks pretty to I can wear it. And that's where we're at with this one now. As I mentioned earlier on, it looked a lot smaller. And now after sitting here and wearing it, by the way, that was mine, not the one I was just bending. Uh, yeah, after wearing it for a while, you can see it's kind of more of that tailored size and overall pretty good, especially after opening that up, made a huge difference on the impression of this being way too small. Now it's kind of a cool, milky colored, trendy frame. This guy and all the other frames here, I'll put links down below for the frames. Not really that concerned about that at this moment. Now, the other side, the one that's been tweaking and bugging me. So we're still good here. We're not sliding anywhere. This side does still feel a little bit loose, but that's, as I mentioned, we haven't made that bend back here. So we're gonna bring that in just a tick bit more. There we go. Now we've got a nice bite behind the ears. It's not too much pressure in any one spot, which is always nice to see. And it fits good. There you go. I actually did this live on camera the other day. If you wanna check out that live video, it's a cool one. I took this pair from when they came in, cut the lenses and everything on the machinery right here beside me, mounted the lenses, adjusted, fit everything on camera, here we are two weeks later of wearing this guy, still doing good. It's almost, it's almost time to readjust. And I will throw that out there too. Any acetate frame, when you're making major changes to the frame, it's gonna need some time to kind of relax into state, okay? So if you go from just tons of pressure or all of a sudden no pressure, whatever adjustments you make, it needs time to kind of set and settle in. And what that amounts to is the material is gonna have some stretch and give to it after these adjustments are made. It's gonna find kind of where it wants to be after you've done that. So you've had your big adjustment. So you just picked up the brand new glasses. A week or two later of full-time wear, sometimes a little bit longer. Obviously it depends on temperatures and moisture in the air and all sorts of other things that'll drive you mad, but you will notice they start to slide again after you've got them that first adjustment. It's inevitable. It's just part of what happens. There are a few frames that are exceptions to that or if the adjustment is just so perfect, there is not too much tension anywhere, everything is magical, well, they're gonna break. <laughs> Speaking of inevitable things. But you'll get to a point where you notice that new pair of glasses is starting to slide now. Then you'll go in, you'll have your new readjustment after that point then they hold their shape very well. It's minor tweaks, hold their shape really well. Major adjustments tend to have a relaxation period. And for some of mine, that was six months or more because I don't wear them super often. I wear them a few times, move on to the next one. Polish those, I promise. Huh. Now, metal fern. I'm not going to actually adjust a metal frame, but I'm going to adjust one with metal nose pads to show you. What we see on these, and the reason I grabbed this one, it's already fitting back here, so I don't need to worry about any of that. It could stand to go in just a tidge, but then it's gonna hurt. Everything from here back is really good on this one. The height overall is kind of where this one can be make it or break it. And you can see very easily I'm running into a little bit of slide on this frame. And as I mentioned, everything here is really good here back. So behind the ears, it's all good. There's nothing going on there, but this frame still wants to do that. What could possibly cause that? Well, it's sitting too high. It's throwing the balance of the frame off. It wants to go to that natural balance position of the frame. And that is when it sits down about a millimeter more, now it doesn't wanna go anywhere. So there's a couple ways to get there and rectify that. We can bring the frame in a little bit closer to the bridge of the nose. And what I'm doing there is I am pinching the nose pads against the front of the frame, basically. I'm putting a little bit of pressure and springing that titanium to where it wants to rest 
a little bit closer to the frame. That's gonna get us part of the way there because that's gonna shift things back just a tick bit. Not a huge, huge amount, but just a little bit. And you can see that's already better. I can push down, I can push up, and I didn't change the display, the angle, how far apart they were, anything. Just a very teeny tiny tweak right there to bring the frame front closer in. If you have an acetate frame, obviously that's not a choice, but you can shift the balance another way, and that is back here with the temples. So let's put these guys back out, back where they were. And now we're back, yep, right in that situation. So right back to that where they're sliding down. <clears throat> in this case, if we wanna keep the frame in that position where it does rise a little bit high because you want more of that full frame oversized look or whatever, that's fine. You can take your temples and you can bend the tips up ever so slightly. Don't wanna do it a huge amount, but I want easy, fixable, work with it type adjustments here. So I'm gonna make very minor tweaks in places that are easy to change and easy to spot so I can get it right back the way it goes. Now, what I did there is I raised up the direction these are going. So now the temples are up a little bit higher than they were. And that's gonna shift the balance point on this frame and same exact thing. You can see I'm putting the same pressure I have been doing from the beginning downward here and it's not slipping and sliding like it was. All this to say, there are a whole hell of a lot of ways to get to the end point, right? Yeah. We just talked about five in 20 minutes with how to actually make the adjustment. So I struggle when somebody's worried about the fit of a frame. <laughs> It's fun, guys, I promise. It's fun. There's not many frames that can't be made to work. If you love one enough, you can get it at least wearable. <sighs> one of these days, I have to teach a class on this stuff. This is the class. Don't tell me to go teach a class. This is the class. It's free and it's out there for everyone. If you're familiar with the methods of how to adjust a frame, it's super easy. If you are not, well, there's a few other videos that get into that a little bit more on how to heat acetate frames and basically everything you would need to go to to get to this video to actually be able to make these adjustments. I more want everyone to understand what's at play and that there's a lot of ways to really make these adjustments and get things where they need to be. It may not be obvious at first, but because there are so many different ways to get to that same endpoint, you can make a frame even like this that's just hugely oversized, way too big, doesn't really fit on the bridge well, doesn't really fit super great behind the ears. There's just a lot of weird stuff going on. You can still make it work. It's like magic. I love it. I absolutely love it. There is always a way to make things work when they're less than ideal. When they're ideal, it should be butter. It's better, like butter. There you go. That's my splur on uh, fit and sliding glasses for 2022. There's a 2021 video, there's a 2020 video. Apparently this is just what I do in December. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have sat through 22 minutes of this, 30 minutes of this, 23 minutes of this, whatever, however long this has ended up being, because I lost track. I got interrupted a few times in between. Hmm, yeah. Then hopefully you understand a little bit more about what goes into keeping a frame from sliding off. This has definitely been the most comprehensive version of it by far. Other videos I've touched on one way to do it or one way to do it or a couple of ways to do it, but this is the most comprehensive one. So I'll try to add chapters for a few of the different ways. Hopefully you got something out of this. Let me know down below if you did take something from this or if you thought I was a rambling madman, which does happen sometimes, a lot of the times. Let me know your thoughts down below. With that, I'll catch you guys next time.